you know, um, are you sitting as groups of your PDOs, no? PDOs, no? Okay, good. Uh, you better call me Francis na lang. Father Francis. Wag lang Mother Francis, ha? Kasi hindi pwede yan. Because uh, it's easy to remember my name because uh, the Pope is also... My, he is my favorite Pope. You know why? Yes. Same name? Mali. Ginaya niya pangalan ko. He imitated my name. Oh, better, di ba? Anyway, what I'm gonna do is, because this is not the actual workshop, but I'll give you some of the steps with questions on how to do it. Okay? Number one is positioning. Kasi pag may brand ka na, which is the number one, which I already showed you, what is your brand? Who you are? No? Something that they can always remember you by. E po position mo ngayon yon. So, the big differentiating idea you strive to own in the minds of your audience. But remember, when you, your audience are millennials and generation Z, ibang-iba sila mag-isip. I have a video of that, pero walang time dyan para ipakita ano yung kanilang qualities that you can touch. Ah. But that will be for the next workshop now. Now, you have to think of that. Hindi pwede bigla yan. You have to discuss it. You have to fight over it. Pag, if you're talking your stuff, you have to fight, ha? Different ideas, okay lang. And then you come up with one. So that's the first thing, positioning. And your positioning should be like this. You understand that? You should be on top of everything. Ooh, see? Like a giraffe. I'll give you an example. What comes into your mind when you see Red Cross? Come on. Blood. I was there at the back. Everybody, almost everybody said blood. Some would say disaster relief. Okay? Watch every word. Disaster relief. Now, blood donation, that's the most common. You know what it is? The American Red Cross is the nation's premier emergency response. See that? Words are important, I tell you, because it creates mindsets. Oh, so you have to ask your organization. That's the first question. What is your organization? How do you want to be remembered? Therefore, you have to craft your organization's positioning and use it to inform and evaluate your communications. Samba kayo, where you are. What is your main thinking that you want to implant in people's minds? These are the questions to ask. What makes, well, I'm just saying spring rain here, but it, you can put your own PDO. I put members. What makes your organization so unique? Don't tell me we are all the same as being building houses for the poor. What in that? Bidding for the homeless is so special about you. I can even just use that as one. But if you have five projects or programs of different kinds, well, that's a different story. So what do you want to be known for? How do we fit in and stand out among our peers? Because I'm sure you have peers. That's your competitive edge. What do you want people to see as your organization's image that means, when I talk to myself and I think about you, what do you, have to, what do you want to remember you by? No. Like me. I have a parish in Manila that I say mass every Sunday. This was not intentional, but when I'm absent, like this week, uh, I'm sure some of the um, uh, parishioners will go to the office and ask, wala na ba yung paring puting buhok? Translate. Is, where is, uh, is the priest with white hair not here anymore? See that? My branding is my white hair. I don't know. They should, said, they should have said, is the handsome priest not here anymore? That I will like that. But if you say the white hair, because maybe that's what they remember from you. And this church that I say mass has thousands. If you're at the back, you cannot see who the priest is. It's like an ant. See? Now, the next thing is, after positioning, what is your personality? Actually, I told it early on, but I, I'd like to give you questions for your workshop. You're not writing, ah? Okay lah, okay lah. Now, personality is this. What is your over, 
overarching feeling you want people to associate with your organization. This is disruptive. Huh? Before, you don't want to deal with feelings. No. Feeling is the name of the game. How do they feel about you? Especially if you're a philanthropy. <laughs> Look at all the video here that is being shown. Huh? Crying people. Da -da -da -da, you know? I was watching um, YouTube on an advertisement of Jollibee. You know, Jollibee is a pop, I don't know if there's Jollibee in Malaysia. You know, they're helping the poor on agriculture. Everybody was crying. I said, wow, okay, drama. But you know, that's important because you get carried away. Emotions are very strong. So you have to look at the overall feeling that you want people to associate with your organization. See this? You understand? Oh my gosh, you don't. <laughs> you know, I, I always look this as a test. Because you can put so much meaning here. Look at the guy on, the, on your right. Thin, skinny. And look at the kind of dress that he's wearing. He's coming from the ukai ukai, right? From the, what do you call this? Uh, how, do you how do you translate that in English? Huh? Second hand, okay. But uh, anyway, ukai ukai is different. Uh, and this guy has a suit, right? He's so stout. But he's not also happy. He's looking at that guy, the same as that guy. It's almost, uh, things like this you have to interpret. Now, that's how you create your, uh, starting with your brand and your image. Now, what's this? See that? We are their voice. PETA. It's all about animals. It's humane society. Now, that is not the real score. The real score is this. Fighting against cruelty to animals. Look at the difference. If you say, we are their voice, these animals. How oh, they are animals, come on. Humane society, what's the connection, right? Ah, it's so abstract out there. But when you say, fighting against cruelty to animals, what goes into your mind? Torture, killing them. Ah, it gets into you, right? You get it? What do you say? Humane society, huh? What's that? Humane? Human? What's the difference? Say cruelty. It's graphic. Huh? So, please write that. That's your workshop. Because uh, when we give the actual workshop, we'll ask for your answers. <laughs> if your answers are, are so bad, then we will limit only to the good. Joke lang. But you try your best. Also this. Find your organization's personality through leadership interviews. No, you have to talk to other leaders. Within and outside your organization. Look at here. If I ask you, if you had a mascot, what would that be? Look at all companies now have mascots, right? And they explain it like Jollibee, McDonald's, everybody has a mascot. Okay? What kind of vehicle would you be, your organization? Are you an airplane? Are you a baroto, a small boat? Are you a ship? Are you a rocket? I don't know. Think about that. No. Are you a cariton, cart? How big? And what are its features and why? It's always the last one is the why. Actually, in, in our lives, one of the most important questions we always have to ask is why, why, why? Why am I in philanthropy? Why am I fundraising? Why am I using this kind of vehicle? Why? It's all why. No. Why is this mascot? Next is, after all that, you have to start measuring. How do you measure up? Supposing you tell yourself, you have to measure yourself. You have to be, how would they call it? Very vicious in evaluating yourself. Number one, are we great at this work? How great are we? It, it, it is not just building self-confidence. It's convincing yourself, I'm great because of this. This is what I've done. Because you have to convince yourself. If you look down on yourself, but please don't cheat yourself. Have numbers. Huh? Have numbers. And interview people so that they will tell you what. Next, then you say, our communication is audience-centric. Which audience? Whom are you 
targeting. Who? How do you say it's audience-centric? Maybe it's centered from what you want to tell them, and you never get their feedbacks. Okay. Who are your audiences based on your communication, and where do you want to go from here? That is the last important. Okay, this is what we have done in our communication, but okay, up, we are only up to here. These are our limitations. Then where do we want to go from here? Can we do it? Okay, clear? No questions? Very good. <clears throat> <laughs> Next is, remember to connect with your audience on their terms, not yours. Because sometimes when you communicate, it's your term. You're a professor. I, I'm tell, telling some of the professors and teachers, now be careful in teaching these millennials and this Generation Z. The Generation Z and Alpha are the most intelligent beings in this planet. Not because we're fools or we're dumb. No, we are not. Even if our brains are the same, they have the advantage of technology. And I don't know why, because they're global, the window to the world is just one little thing, tiny thing, but they're there, and they're fast. They're multitasking, not only that. Multitasking also is the millennials, but the Z is different. Now, they cannot focus. They only have eight seconds to listen to you. Millennials have 12 seconds. Baby boomers, minutes, forget it, see? So how can you focus when you, you're this and that? You cannot blame them, that's them. Therefore, like now, the most, the most Popular videos are 15 seconds or 30 seconds there. If you look at advertisements when the small kids like, like that, ah, count one and two and three and four, change video, change video. Try that, all the advertisements, because they are paid highly. One TV advertisement in the Philippines of 15 seconds is almost 1 million pesos. The cheapest is 500 pesos. It may not be quality. See that? So their terms, you have to talk to them in their terms, in their language. Uh, I don't have the time, so I want to show you this video, but it's okay. Next. So what's your communication plan then? Ah, oh, this is what you have to do. And this is what we'll take up in the workshop. Written document that describes written, spoken, electronic, hard, and soft interaction with different audiences, stakeholders, as specific and monitor based on the 85 million years. Yeah, that's it. See? You have to write it. You don't have to keep it in your mind. No. And it has to be done with a team. See? So, as a workshop, uh, you have to answer that and I have to, to review it with you. But due to lack of time, then. I can't do that. So we'll see each other again during the workshop. Okay? Clear? No more questions? Good. Uh, good afternoon once more to everyone. Because we still have a mass and all that, so we still have uh, one more uh, um, speaker. Uh, and then also we'll have the uh, Q&A, I think.